And so welcome to the first AFLW show for 2022. And uh, I don't know about you, Sarah, but I'm absolutely pumped for the season to start. No, it's going to be amazing. We've had some really positive news um, during the off season. Lots of the women are getting ready to play and they've been training really hard, especially over the COVID lockdowns. A lot of them have dedicated a lot of time to improving their game uh, while they might not have been able to train. So it's going to be a really interesting start to round one. So let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room. COVID. Yeah. How is that going to affect the season? Like, I know it's already affected two or three teams with some of their better players deciding not to have the vaccination and therefore they'll be out for the season. But let's look at it particularly as it affects those clubs and then also how it's going to affect everyone, especially with this new Omicron strain. Yes, definitely. I, the AFLW has released some guidelines as to what the season's going to look like for fans. Um, and it is what would have been expected is that wearing your mask when you can't physically distance, uh, no water fountains or anything at the venues, um, only card payments, all that sort of stuff that was sort of going to happen and is the, the basic sort of standard safety protocol in the times that we're in. Um, but for some of these teams, it's going to be that we're going to go through a lot of rap tests and a lot of the um, female footballers are going to have to work out whether they're going to, where they're going to get rap tests and taking them before the games. And then also how to avoid COVID in and amongst all of that. Like there are a lot of footballers who are in roles where they might be in contact with COVID every single day and they might catch it, someone is bound to catch it, and how that's going to affect the game. Because you could have your top six players on a team all out because of COVID, and it can completely change the rest of the season. So depending on how this affects players and how this affects clubs, um, there's going to be a really massive impact in not necessarily the quality of the games that we're seeing, but there's going to be a big stir up in terms of the fact that if some of the bottom teams can manage to retain their best players and some of the top teams have top players fall to COVID, um, we might see a bit of an upset in some of these games through the year. Question, if the rest of the general public can't get rat tests, um, how is that going to affect the AFLW? Because it's all right to say, oh, you've got to have this test. The trouble is if you can't get hold of them, um, how, how can they continue? Uh, it's a very good question. And to be completely honest, I have no idea. It's sorry. Um, it's going to be really interesting. Um, again, I'm not even sure how they're actually currently getting priority to the test now. Um, but I think they're still managing to get a hold of them. They might have an agreement um, with someone in higher power who has the ability to influence that sort of thing. But as a, from a club perspective, these clubs would be having rat tests for their men's football team who are currently doing their pre-season and their women's football teams who are about to start the season. They'd be going through hundreds of rat tests, thousands um, a month. I don't know where exactly they're getting them, but hopefully they can stay and keep hold of them into the future. Otherwise, I'm not sure how they're going to go about testing. Is, isn't it amazing that um, when we had vaccines and we thought that life would get back to something approaching normal, um, that with the AFLW season to start imminently, suddenly it's all tossed up in the air again. And if can you imagine being an AFLW administrator either at league headquarters or at a club trying to work your way through the COVID minefield and, you know, okay, so we've got these games, then a final series. It must look like um, looking into eternity to try and work out whether it's going to get there or not. Well, I guess to start with, if I was an administrator of um, the AFLW or any sport at this time, I'd be pulling my hair out. It would be one of the most stressful situations to try and navigate around. 
And the AFLW has already had some serious curveballs thrown at them with the fact that they're operating in the summer and it's turned into a year round bowl to a lot of people. And the game keeps evolving. Like there's no way you can sit down and let things happen. The game's just going to keep changing and things are going to keep progressing. And as much as it's great to see things progress and get better, in COVID, it also means with things evolving on and off the field um, in the middle of the pandemic, it's going to uh, really, it's going to affect how all um, admin coaches, staff go about their role. As we were talking about before, players who might not be able to play because they do get COVID um, is going to affect the top 21 that's being selected for that week and who's actually going to be able to get out on the field. So St Kilda are already having problems. Uh, their best and fairest from last season, Georgia Patrikios, um, has declined to have vaccinations. She's out for the season. Um, at Carlton, it's Denny Van Hagen. Um, she's been moved to the inactive list because similarly, she's not going to have the vaccination. So Carlton, St Kilda, and I think Adelaide also affected. Um, actually, Denny Van Hagen is at Adelaide, not Carlton. So. But uh, Carlton's also affected with one of their better players. So uh, it's already had an effect on the league, um, one that we didn't see in the AFL last season. Yes, and it's we've seen um, a male um, Carlton footballer as well has decided to retire from the game. And it, it makes it interesting how exactly clubs are going to go about this in the future. And um, what happens to Georgia with the Saints? Because she is one of the, not only one of their best players, but she's one of the best players in the league. Um, and what happens in a post-pandemic world? Do we welcome her back in with open arms? What would the dynamic be with the team? I know she's also Coburg area based, I believe. So when there's new teams coming in, could it be that Essendon um, try and swoop in and try and pinch her and grab a few other players and really strengthen up their inaugural team? Um, it's going to make for something that's not only affecting this season, but it's going to affect how these players are perceived forever. All right. Well, how about we uh, have a look at who might improve and who might fall away this season? Um, just recapping. How the ladder finished last season, you had Adelaide, Brisbane, Collingwood and Melbourne, all with seven wins and two losses, and then Fremantle and the Kangaroos making up the six with six wins and three losses. So one game between first and sixth. Then you had Carlton, the Bulldogs, with five wins, GWS with four, Richmond and St Kilda with three, West Coast Eagles with two, Geelong with one, and Gold Coast not being able to open their account at all. So... Given that's where everybody finished last season, Sarah, um, who do you see the big improvers this year? Um, it's going to be interesting. Team-wise, I think we're going to see a lot of improvement from GWS and a lot from Richmond as well. There was some bad news coming out with um, Ali McKenzie uh, being injured in pre-season, so she won't be able to play round one for the Tigers. But we've seen some great recruits uh, and strengthening culture at the club as well. I think it's going to show that those clubs are going to be on a big rise, especially when other clubs that were top end, especially the last couple of years, have lost key players to injuries and bottom teams not really being able to um, strengthen their list or not being able to hold off on injuries uh, during the off season. It's a really good opportunity for those mid-tier teams uh, or teams that have been mid-tier previously to either, you know, take the opportunity by the throat and work its way up. Question for you. Is Gold Coast's last finish where they really are? Or is it when they were finalists the year before, because it was a rather dramatic drop off in one season. Um, if you ask me, I see them as being the big improvers and rebounding this season. No, I I would like to hope so. Um, I still have them as my wooden spooners for this year, unfortunately. Oh, come on! I know it's. I've been keeping a close eye on them as well because I do have a soft spot for Gold Coast Suns 
um, both in the AFL and in the AFLW. And it's become something where it just seems like they keep having these tiny injuries and there's not a whole lot going on behind the scenes um, through the off season. So there isn't much keeping in touch with them. But I, I can't see how they've improved drastically enough to be able to come out on top. Okay, well, I see, first of all, new coach, Hannah Dunn. Um, what an amazing thing. A woman actually is head coach of an AFLW team. It's amazing. And especially after a lot of fans were disappointed by um, Peter Searle's exit from the Saints. Um, it's, it's another sort of a nice piece of news, I guess. We, we know that um, currently there are a lot of male coaches and they are, they're very talented coaches. Um, but in the future, we're looking forward to seeing more opportunities for females in sport. And these include female, uh, female coaches. So it'll be good to sort of see that this is the start following like a Beck Goddard starting in. And now she's going to be coaching Hawthorne in the future. Um, Peter Searle, uh, who did exit from the Saints. And now we've got more female coaches uh, and current AFLW players sort of preparing for that next step in their career after they retire and getting ready to coach. Yeah. Um, of course, one of the benefits of finishing bottom is that you get first pick in the draft. And Charlie Rowbottom from the Oakley Chargers um, mm -hmm. would normally you would expect to be picked up by a... Victorian team uh, nominated that she wanted to go to Gold Coast. So they've got the first pick in the draft. They picked up uh, the Southern Saints best and fairest, who's also a key forward, uh, Tara, Tara Bohana. Um, 19 goals from 16 games. I think they're, oh, they also picked up Vivian Saad, the uh, North Melbourne rookie ruckman. So I think there's plenty happening there. I can't see them finishing bottom. I won't uh, tell you yet where I see them finishing. But certainly not bottom. But uh, so of the top six from last season, do you see any of them falling away this year? Um, it is going to, from the top six, we've heard a lot of injuries coming from Fremantle. So they're the ones that I see sort of taking a bit of a plummet um, and sort of becoming or settling into that middle of the ladder position. Um, the other ones, I can't see too much changing in terms of how our ladder was structured last year. I still believe Brisbane is going to be really strong and finish up on top. And a lot of clubs that we spoke about um, quite frequently as big improvers like Collingwood and like GWS, I think they're going to work their way up a bit higher. Okay, well, two things that I think from last season. Um, Collingwood, I think they've... Uh, improved. They brought in Sabrina Frederick, the uh, gun forward from Richmond. I think that's a big loss for Richmond. I don't think Richmond could afford to uh, lose a player like that, especially when they're, they're building. Um, they've got a number of All-Australians in that side, uh, especially in the midfield. Chloe Malloy and Bree Davey, who we spoke about continuously in last year's shows, um, they're still there. Uh, they've got Frederick to pick from. Um, they also recruited Imogen Bartlett, uh, who was the leading goal kicker for Collingwood in the VFLW last season. So they've strengthened their forward line. About the only person they've lost is uh, Maddie Shevlin. Um, and I don't see that as much of a, uh, a problem, but I see Collingwood as improving their position from fourth last season. Definitely. Um, not a I don't want to give away too much about um, my ladder, but they have definitely worked their way up there in mine. And they seem to have prepared really well for the upcoming season. Even in the draft, they've picked up some really talented players and it's going to be really strong competition playing against them. We were, they've always been a team that is strong and they've been consistently strong throughout the AFLW's existence as a league. And now that they've picked up some of these players and cult heroes, cult heroes like Sabrina, um, who didn't do as well with Richmond as she was expected to do, maybe now with Collingwood and a few like really strong midfielders feeding the ball to her, she'll be able to kick a few more goals. Um, the team that I see is falling off the most, Carlton. Yes, um, definitely. Taylor Harris 
to Melbourne, Jess Hosking to Richmond, Chloe Dalton and Katie Loins to GWS. I don't think you can afford in a trade period to lose four of your more experienced players. Um, and that combined with, I don't think they've picked up very much. Um, I see them falling off and certainly I can't see them finishing as high as I did last season, which was seventh. Definitely not. In the When we were talking about the trade period on the show, we could see that they were, they'd just been decimated their list. They'd had a lot of players leave and it didn't really seem like they got much back for it either. We know that um, the two women going up to GWS were going back up there because that's where they're originally from and where they were located. So just making the trip home, um, it just seems like they got a bit um, unlucky with the players that they lost. Definitely. All right. Well, let's look at the big story for the week, apart from COVID, and that is um, former Carlton player Taylor Harris taking to social media uh, during the week, absolutely unloading on Carlton. Um, how did you see that playing out? It was never going to be good um, to start with, and I didn't really expect it to happen either. With um, what Taylor Harris has sort of been through career-wise, you wouldn't expect her to sort of poke the bear more than she already has with her relationship with Carlton, um, but she did it. And we all knew that she was eventually going to ask for a trade um, when we found out that her uh, conversations with Carlton weren't going the way that she wanted. So when she ended up at Melbourne, lots of Melbourne fans were excited to see her there, especially as she originally in some of the um, exhibition matches was playing for Melbourne. Um, but yeah, completely sort of caught off guard for a lot of people. We all knew that she didn't have positive feelings towards the club, but taking to social media and discussing them there and not even discussing them, just sort of putting them out there and maybe throwing a few too many not great words um, out was disappointing to see as well. Yeah, I, look, I don't think it's a good thing when people go to social media. Only bad things happen. It probably was better for her to say nothing about it, really, and just let it go. But uh, she bit, and it is what it is. But uh, I'm sure uh, the Melbourne coach, Mick Stenier, will have her concentrating on uh, Saturday's game against the Western Bulldogs. And uh, hopefully that's all we'll hear from now on. You know, let her football do the talking, I think. Definitely. And it's been a bit of a weird um, season for her as well. She didn't do as great as she was expected to do. Um, so hopefully she can let her football do the talking, which is probably what she should have done in the first place instead of taking to social media. Um, but yeah, taking care of herself and her career on field rather than staring the pot off field. Okay, let's uh, look at AFLW round one. We've been waiting for ages for this to come around and it kicks off Friday night, 7.15pm in Frankston of all places at a place called Sky Bus Stadium. Um, St Kilda versus Richmond. Um, Who will win this one and why? Um, I think Richmond are going to win this one. Uh, unfortunately, St Kilda have lost a few strong players during the off-season to injury. And as we spoke about before, to um, opinions about the COVID-19 vaccine. But I think Richmond are going to come out on top here. Um, it's sort of, I'm seeing Richmond as they've grown and they were a lot stronger last season than they were expected to be. So coming into this, I can see them winning by more than two goals. Okay. Uh, then we go to Saturday, uh, a triple header, if you like, for Saturday mid-after, well, late afternoon and evening. Uh, North Melbourne playing Geelong at Arden Street. Your thoughts? I think North Melbourne um, have always been really strong and I'm not sure how much Geelong has improved. So I see North Melbourne having a bit of an easier win uh, on this match. Uh, and the seven o'clock game, probably the match of the round, Western Bulldogs playing Melbourne. Yes, and it's the, the grand final rematch, I guess, coming from uh, the one club mentality with the men's sides. Um, but I think Melbourne are going to come out on top in this one. The Bulldogs are strong and so is Melbourne and this will be a great match to watch. But I just see Melbourne having a bit more of an edge over them. 
Okay, and 8.50 p.m. Um, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, the Western Derby, Frio playing West Coast at Fremantle Oval, and the West Coast women have never won the Western Derby. So will this be the first one? I don't think so. West Coast, have they've had some strong players returning from injury, but I can't see them taking the win over Frio, who have also lost players, but still have some of their strong core players to get them the win. All right, then we go to Sunday, uh, the 2.10pm game, Adelaide and Brisbane playing a rematch of the 2021 grand final. Uh, will it be the same result? I think so. I think Brisbane are again going to come out on top. Um, Adelaide, both really strong um, in the AFLW league. But I think Brisbane have just, they've really got that mentality and they're not, they haven't taken a day off since um, winning the flag. They did their celebrating and they went straight back into their pre-season and they went straight back into exercising and preparing their bodies for the new season. Um, I could see Brisbane again coming away with the win. All right, the 4.10pm game at Princess Park. And this is usually the game that kicks off the season. Carlton playing Collingwood. Before you get to who won or who will win, Sarah, why did this get bumped from uh, the opening match of the season? I'm not too sure. Um, Richmond versus St Kilda is an interesting one to kick the season off with. Uh, we know that St Kilda won't be able to have any home games at RSCA for the first couple of rounds because they're doing some work on the Oval. So I think this was an effort to sort of throw, throw a bone to St Kilda and take them out to their side of the state um, in Frankston with the Skybus Stadium, which is a great stadium and it'll be a great game. Um, but yeah, I couldn't tell you exactly why they've made the switch this year. And who'll win and why? I think Collingwood will come away with the win. Um, again, Carlton, as we said before, have just lost players that um, were the second effort players and they really pushed behind and they made up the really strong core of the team. Um, I don't know how they're going to go without them and it will be interesting to see how they sort of fill those spaces. Um, especially Chloe Dalton from the back line, who is one of the better defenders in the league, is one of the better defenders in the league. Um, yeah, I can't see them coming away with the win, unfortunately. All right, and the final game of the round at 6.10pm, um, the Gold Coast playing Greater Western Sydney. Unfortunately for Gold Coast, um, I don't see them coming away with a win. Uh, they've done as we spoke about we they've done a lot of work um but gws have recruited really well um picked up some great players from carlton and it will be really good to see how they go i'm really hoping that gold coast have a really great and well contested match but i can't see them winning all right so to recap richmond north melbourne melbourne Fremantle, brisbane collingwood greater western sydney sounds good uh, I'm just looking at those to see if I've got any disputes with you. Uh, Richmond, I agree with. North Melbourne, I agree with. Melbourne, I agree with. Fremantle, I agree with. Mm. Collingwood, I agree with. I think Adelaide at home might be too good. So we differ there. Interesting. And the Gold Coast to get off to a great start with a win at home over Greater Western Sydney. So we differ on two. There we go. We'll have to see if she comes away with the extra points, I guess, next week. We will. All right. The all-important, and I'm sure Dalligan will be very interested, as well as the gelding, in uh, your thoughts on the how the ladder will finish at the end of the home and away season. So starting with team number 14, and working to the top, um, who's going to finish on the bottom? I think Gold Coast are going to finish on the bottom. Much right. to, um, I'm sure you will see them placing a bit higher, but I think they're going to have the wooden spoon again this season. Okay. 13? West Coast. 12? Geelong. 11? St Kilda. 
But if I move down the ladder, I've popped Carlton at 10th. Nine. Richmond. Eight. Fremantle. Seven. GWS. All right, the all important top six. Here we go. Six. Bulldogs. Five. North Melbourne. Four. Melbourne. Three. Adelaide. Two. Collingwood. One. And Brisbane. Okay. All right, I'll give you mine from the bottom. St Kilda. I West see Coast. that. Yep. Carlton. Richmond. Geelong. North Melbourne. Greater Western Sydney. Fremantle. Okay, the top six. Number six, and a surprise packet, Gold Coast. We'll rebound and have a better season than last year. You have a lot of hope for Gold Coast this season. I'm bullish. <laughs> All right, number five, the Western Bulldogs getting, getting back into the uh, final six. Number four, Brisbane. Number three, Adelaide. Number two, Collingwood. And... Hometown decision, number one, Melbourne. Interesting. So Melbourne, I like it. No, I reckon they could do it. We'll have to see, I guess, who gets closest when the season finishes up. Well, Taylor Harris in from Carlton. Olivia Purcell in from Geelong. Um, add to that Daisy Pearce, Karen Paxman, Lauren Pearce, and last year's rising star, Tyler Hanks. So, you know, I think... There's a lot to like, um, and they're looking to emulate uh, their men's team. So what better way to do it than uh, finish on top at the end of the season? Exactly. And be double victory for you, I guess, Professor. That'd be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, it'd be good to, I guess, after not having a flag for so long, to win two. Work well. Well, it'd be almost unbelievable. That's what I'll say. Almost unbelievable. Almost. I guess we'll right. have to see if you get it at the end of the year. Well, we'll see how well uh, your and my selections go. We'll have plenty to talk about next week, no doubt. Definitely. So um, until next week, um, go the AFLW. Sounds like a plan.